Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all over the world. Dobson 777A here. Well, you guys are probably wondering where the heck I've been. But you know what? Sometimes life just gets busy. I've been focusing on a couple things and uh, decided to kind of get back in here. And I, I'm going to make it a priority to try to get back in here. Hey, Alex K., I want to make it a priority to get back in here. Um, I've been uh, taking some videos, um, growing some more Cornish rocks, and they're like five weeks in right now. So I have a few more weeks before it's time to process, but I've been taking videos every week for you to be able to see the progress that they're making. And it's actually just absolutely amazing how fast these chickens grow. Now, you probably remember... Um, Prior to my little hiatus, I had actually bought some uh, some more Rhode Island Red hens, 12 of them, and they actually just started laying in the last couple of weeks. So that was back in May. Remember, I grew them from little chicks, and they just started laying, and I, now I'm getting anywhere from six to nine eggs a day, and they're actually uh, getting pretty good size eggs already. They start out fairly small. So we got Patrick Bateman and Jim Richter. What's happening? So I just thought I'd kind of get in here and uh, show my face. I've been putting a few things on the community tab. I don't know if you've been monitoring that. Every once in a while, some videos come by my uh, my feed on YouTube or others, and uh, I, you know, try to get it out there in front of you. Now I'm going to tell you, I did a lot of research, probably about. Uh, 2017 when I first started, uh, you know, setting up this little mini homestead and I had uh, a friend of mine gave me some, and I'm not going to pronounce it right properly, but I call them like wine adets or something. And we had them for probably a year or so. And then I decided to grow some Rhode Island red. Some of you have been with me a long time. You probably remember. And I'd actually stepped on one of the poor little babies. Uh, but anyways, uh, I got a mix of them. And we had them for several years. And um, I've kind of done a lot of studying on this stuff. <coughs> yeah, I was going to talk about that in a minute, Jim. Uh, I've done a lot of studying on this. And I decided to get the multi-purpose Rhode Island Reds because they're really good for cold weather. And they just seem to be, you know, nice, tame, beautiful. My rooster is huge now. But, you know, my other hens were about three years old, and that was another thing. It seems like about three years is a good time to change out to new uh, hens because they just start slowing down, and it seems like a lot of the eggshells start getting really thin. And I've noticed it's a big difference with these uh, new eggs. They are really thicker shell and are doing very well. So I actually had a couple eggs tonight with a, kind of a pork steak, which was great. So... Jim's bringing up the fact that we had an X-Class, like the very minimal X-Class uh, CME coming off the sun, and it's supposed to hit tonight, and we should see it into tomorrow. Now, you're probably going to mainly see this up in the northern regions, but we're, we're so cloudy here. We've been in rain for days. It's supposed to clear up tomorrow, so I don't know if it'll still be uh, something available to see tomorrow night or not, but... Uh, you know, the sun is waking up. We're moving towards a solar maximum, and this is just the beginning. But uh, this was kind of a direct hit, and we're probably going to see some perturbations in communications and other things. Uh, but it's a very minimal X class. But that's uh, that's one of the more serious um, CMEs that you can get. I kind of watch Suspicious Observers. I don't watch a show every day, but. Uh, Suspicious Observers is like one of the better shows that I've seen out there for just the facts. Now, he he is very um, scientific, so a lot of his stuff is going to go above your head, but he has nice visuals and everything. And if you watch him for a while, you'll start picking up on a lot of, you know, the lingo. But I kind of like his uh, quick three to five minute uh, show that he does once or twice a day. Uh, anyways... We got uh, two thumbs up. I've been monitoring the uh, precious metals. Uh, we've been, you know, we kind of picked up, the floor has kind of shifted up a little bit and we're, we're now, uh, I'll probably try to get some charts in shortly in the next couple of days. But, uh, 
you know, we're, we're banging up close to 1800 again. And then we go back down to like 1775. I didn't look at it before the show, but I watched it a little bit earlier this morning and silver's doing fairly well right now too. Platinum is a little bit on the lower side than I would have liked, but it looks like it's uh, hanging in there as well. Uh, not a bad uh, point. I, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of articles and watched quite a few vid videos where uh, there's a lot of people thinking we're going to punch past 2000 very quickly and head right into 3000 for gold. And, you know, I don't know what that's going to do for silver, but that's usually good news for silver as well. So you might, and I've talked to you before about, you know, if we hit 3000, you're talking about a 30% increase, which is a pretty substantial increase. And I told you before, there's, it's, it's not unusual uh, for like the dollar to take a, or any currencies to take a pretty good uh, smack. And of course that would do something fantastic to the metals, you know, the opposite way. It's like an equal and opposite reaction, you know, one of Newton's laws there. So anyways, I hope you've got your positions and we just got to hang out and wait. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to, this game's going to keep going, but something's going to, eventually give the fact that, uh, you know, we never saw any significant dips. I think, uh, I think that says a lot about the precious metals. Hey, Craig, uh, you know, I was a fisherman my whole life and, uh, I've always been able to process animals. It really, it's really not that big a deal. And I've got videos that show step-by-step step what you got to do for this. And it, uh, it works, it works very well. I think so many of us are so far removed from our food that uh, we can't appreciate the steps that are involved. And I've got 24 chickens that I'm hoping it'll be say minimum six pounds. So let's see what, I mean, uh, processed weight, six pounds. So that's 144 pounds of meat that only took me, you know, say two months, which that's what I love about these things. They're, they're much quicker than like the Rhode Island Reds to uh, to do this. Rhode Island Reds to get to a three pound chicken. I mean, it probably takes you like six months. They don't eat near, nearly, well, actually they probably eat about the same because it's stretched out over twice the amount of time. But I, I just like the idea of uh, just take a couple months, get your meat and shoot 24 chickens. That probably covers me for six months for at least chicken. You know, growing rabbit, uh, rabbit uh, took a lot longer. It cost about twice as much to do rabbit. I think I figured I was doing about a dollar a pound for uh, chicken, myself not counting my labor, just the feed. And so it uh, it was a lot more expensive with rabbit. In fact, I think it was like $3.50 a pound. But, you know, it gave you, I, I'm going to say rabbit has a flavor closer to like a cross between pork and chicken. It was a little more work too, it seemed like, uh, but although you didn't need to have the chicken plucker, you didn't have to go through all the dipping and everything for getting rid of the feathers and all that. So I don't know, maybe it was about the same amount of work to do rabbits as it was chickens, but that's the way it goes. So what do you think about, uh, I saw something the other day where one of the judges had uh, put a stay on the order of trying to, uh, you know, these COVID uh, vaccine mandates, he put a stay on that. So like the military and other folks that can't throw people out. Um, there's a lot more information coming about natural immunity now. And so they're trying to put pass some legislation that they have to consider natural immunity. So a lot of that is now finally taking, but you know, I mean, I think 60% of the population now has been uh, vaccinated. So they're screwed. And I don't know if if you saw the article that I posted on the community tab, that there's concerns that people's immune systems are compromised from these vaccines. And so they're actually going to have the AIDS uh, type symptoms and probably need substantial treatments uh, for that because their immune systems are being compromised substantially. And it makes you wonder why they're trying to do you know, booster after booster. And now they're trying to get the young kids and everything. It's just absolutely crazy. So we'll see.
I think right now, I mean, I've been able to avoid the uh, shot, but I'm not working. So I'm not in that position like maybe some of you guys are. I don't know if you guys have been put in that position or not. Um, seems like the perfect time to start your own company and keep it less than 100 people so that you don't have to force that mandate. But you saw what happened to Southwest Airlines. They were trying to do it there and uh, basically just about shut down the airlines with uh, people, you know, getting the calling in sick or whatever, just decided not to come to work to make a point. And so they backed off real quick. Nah, chickens are actually very easy. Very easy. You gotta watch my video. I show step by step in there. There's a, it's like a directory. You gotta go into, you know, click on the little icon, you know, where it says Dobson 777, and then look for the directory for the videos. And in there you'll find like Cornish rocks and you'll even find a directory for rabbits. And then you can go ahead and uh, it'll tell you step by step how to raise them and how to process them and all that stuff. I mean, I spent a lot of time probably a year or two ago, you know, documenting everything that I was doing. And I, I still refer to the videos for like temperatures that I do and uh, for like getting rid of the feathers. And um, it's, it's a wealth of information that I've given everyone and it's free. Just go out there and look for it. I even tell you how to feed them. Yeah. The Cornish rocks, there's a little bit of a recipe with them. Um, these things for the first, uh, 10 days, or let's say two weeks, um, you give them 22% protein and you keep food in there 24 seven. But after, you know, 10 to 14 days, you have to take it away at night because they grow so fast. Uh, they will actually break bones and flop over dead, have heart attacks and all kinds of stuff because they grow super fast. And so after a month, roughly a month, then you start backing off the 20% protein and it's still the 12 on 12 off feeding. Now the group of uh, chickens that I have, they did not grow at the proper rate as what they were supposed to. And I think it's just because I've been lazy getting up in the morning. Instead of getting up like seven in the morning, going out, taking the care of the animals, sometimes it's eight thirty, nine o'clock. And so I don't think they were getting enough feed and then I noticed lately I was needed to go out in the afternoon and fill up their feed containers even more because they were, you know, eating everything out and there was nothing left. They're drinking like over five, six gallons of water a day too, which is kind of amazing. And boy, do they poop. So I'm having to put a lot of shavings out into their pen so that they're, they're sitting on like dry ground, especially we're getting into colder weather. I don't know how y'all's weather has been. We're, uh, We've been dipping into the 40s at night, and uh, the end of this next week, we're going to be down into the 30s. So that's that's going to be a little chilly. I've been running the fireplace at night, but I only need to do the force one, uh, the upstairs one. I haven't run the downstairs. So your employer is forcing you to vaccinate. I think the stay that they did for... Uh, was government kind of government employees only. I don't think they did it for all the other companies, but I'll tell you, if you're in Florida, the, uh, the Florida governor is, uh, uh, suing these employers that are, uh, doing this kind of stuff. So my old employers, uh, told everybody if they didn't get vaccinated by October 15th, they'd be laid off in January. So so a whole bunch of people that were near retirement just said, screw it, we're retiring. And I basically told them, I said, let them go and lay yourself off because you get, you know, unemployment. And more than likely, this is all going to be challenged in court and you'll get uh, all your back pay back, everything. I know that that's what's going to happen. I've listened to a lot of constitutional lawyers and they said, this is completely unconstitutional what they're forcing people to do. Uh I'm seeing some, a lot of information about uh, uranium lately. You know, we've been kind of following that off and on, and we probably missed a pretty good liftoff already, but a lot of people are realizing that, you know, for uh, trying to get like 
lower carbon emissions and stuff, they all realized that nuclear is still like the only way. And they also s saw what happened in uh, Texas when, you know, the wind power and solar power all went down and even their natural gas and propane, everything, all their equipment wasn't designed for the super cold weather. And so they realized they need to have base load with nuclear and everything. So I think, uh, I think we're starting to see a sea change that's happening just for practical reasons. So I think uh, nu nukes are coming back online and you're going to see, uh, and I mean, uranium was like at a, I forget, multi-decade low. And by the way, coal was also, and coal is starting to make a comeback as well. And I think, again, they realize they got to have reserves for uh, the base load when something happens, you got to have reserves and coal is a good approach for that. So a couple things out there that uh, are something you probably can look at. I don't know if you've seen uh, like in Europe, a whole bunch of stuff's going on with propane where the costs have gone through the roof. And that's why they're having to look at other things because they realize they've, they've kind of got screwed by going with this, you know, low, emit, low carbon emission stuff. And it's now, their electricity bills are like tripling and stuff. Don't be surprised. I was hearing that uh, we are going to have a significant cost increase in power. And we've already seen it, you know, at the gas pumps. Locally here, we're about 315, which is uh, pretty high, pretty doggone high. And, uh, but, you know, look out for your electricity and everything else. I did a big uh, analysis of my electrical, including propane and everything else usage. And I did a comparison because you remember I did a bunch of upgrades on my house. You know, I, I did the solar, I put in a battery system, I put in, you know, tons of insulation. I spent like 3,500 bucks just on insulation on, in my attic. So like an R90 type attic. And even with uh, the, the foil, radiant barrier foil. And then I put in wood stoves. I mean, I spent a lot of money. And the funny thing was when I did my analysis, you know, the four months of winter, uh, that's where I saw my biggest savings in electricity. And it was because of using the wood. Now, again, I do all my own wood processing and everything. So there's a lot of work to kind of save electricity, but it was way more energy saved in those four months than in the eight months of uh, my solar, which is kind of surprising to me. So anyways, I found that kind of really interesting. And so that's going to be a great video when I bring that up. You, you'll kind of be shocked. But, you know, not only was I trying to save my recurring costs, I knew at some point we were going to have substantial cost increases and so when the electricity rates go up, my savings will be even greater uh, because I'm just using a certain amount of power and I'm, use, I'm using very little. Oh yeah, I forgot to also put uh, you know, LED lights all throughout the house. If I replaced, I forget, over a hundred light bulbs all throughout the house to LED. So anyways, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of things that I've been building up for future videos. It's going to be more updates of some of the things you've seen in the past, but I'm going to do individual videos for each one of these things and kind of show you, you know, because the data is kind of in now. I had to wait for like a whole year to go through so I could compare the previous year. And, it, and this was almost like multi-year projects getting all this stuff done too, if you remember. Yeah, I don't know about that unemployment thing. That would be kind of interesting. I doubt they will pay you, force you to pay it back, but who knows? By the way, how many of y'all have children? I was just reading an article about this. I guess since July, they've been giving people some 300 bucks or something per child um, to kind of help out in these tough times. And now people are saying that's another entitlement the government has kicked out. So if you've got a family, you're, you've are you been getting some kind of a windfall from the government that uh, I thought, man, isn't this interesting how this stuff comes out? I also saw they did a 30% increase in uh, food stamps, but yet they only gave like a 6% increase in 
uh, Social Security uh, benefits. So, you know, makes you wonder about some of this stuff, doesn't it? Patriot Man is in the house. Yeah, chickens are absolutely the easiest thing in the world to uh, process. There's just a couple things you got to be careful of when you're when you're doing it. But it's you know it's it's I don't think there's really that much difference than processing fish myself, truthfully. Man, I've been talking for 20 minutes nonstop here. That's amazing. I didn't even think I had that much to talk about. Throw some questions up. I already covered a wide range of topics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I believe, uh, yeah, California. My cat, <laughs> my son is on a, a base, and he told me that uh, even the base gasoline was over $4. So that's, that's amazing because normally it's not nearly the same price as what's outside the base. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I did not take the uh, vaccine. Oh, yeah, can you believe they're talking about giving $450,000 to illegals? I guess if they split up the family, that's ridiculous. You could tell they're just trying to trash the currency. When, oh, I see, Shan is gold going up, then when is gold going up? <laughs> you mean when is gold going up? Gold has been going up a little bit. It's trying to get up to where it's at. But, I, you know, this is the time of year where you normally see the precious metals start to uh, launch a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see uh, if it really does it this year or not. But, uh, yeah, it usually runs all the way up through, like, February. So we should see the miners, everything else. I hadn't even really been looking at my portfolios, truthfully. I've been busy. Kansas, 350 for diesel. I mean, I remember there was a period of time a few years back where Dan diesel was cost more than uh, regular. You know what your regular gas is? Funny how that happens sometimes. No, I'm not taking the vaccine. I don't have any plans to take the vaccine. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I actually get concerned when, you know, there's things that you, like how many people have been taking the flu shot forever? I quit taking the flu shot probably 15 years ago because when I started even researching the flu shot, the flu shot was such a, uh, a low probability of them even detecting the right one and, you know, years ago, and I'm an old guy, but, you know, they used to have one strain that they were protecting you for. Then they went to, I think they called it trivalent, or maybe it was some other tri something. So that means they were trying to do like three different strains protect you for, and then I don't know what it's up to now, but I just thought, man, you know, they really just can't get this anywhere. You got you to gotta not use certain words or code it a little bit because uh, those things will um, trigger, you know, I had to actually release that, uh, that statement you wrote, warning signs. You're welcome, Patriot Man. Oh, 320 for Meridian. We're like 315 here at least the other day. Dubia roaches. Never heard of them. Yes, Linda, it's been a long time. I hadn't even looked since the last time I did. I, I started this video out saying that uh, I've got several uh, things that are, uh, that I put together, but I have not, uh, have not, uh, you know, put them to, uh, it's not really tape, but I haven't put it in the computer yet, done any editing or anything, but I've been taking snippets of all of my animals out there and, and trying to, I mean, a lot of what I've been doing is preparing for winter. So I've been cleaning out all my gardens, getting them all weeded out. And um, there was a little bit of maintenance stuff that I had to do and 
all kinds of stuff. So there's problems if you're dealing with any illegal aliens, you need to make sure there's two or more of you to uh, have witnesses. Yeah, there's always issues. I mean, there's a lot of problems even in companies where men don't want to mentor women anymore because of the Me Too movement and all that. Oh my God, you know, I give everything to my chickens. Whenever something's starting to get a little old in the fridge, I just bring it out there and dump it into the chickens. The chickens eat everything. Where have I been? This has been, there's, I still, there's some things going on in my personal life and there, this is going to be an interesting story when it's all over. So you will be shocked when it's over of what's actually happened. There's possibly a book that's going to be coming out of this because I have an amazing amount of documentation I've put together for this. Wow, 280 bucks from a nine-year-old three months ago. I thought it was like a monthly thing. Is it not a monthly thing that you get from the government? Yeah, I'll try to do a video of what's going on in the yard and everything. I'm just about done cleaning everything up. Yeah, I was thinking about talking to my uh, produce department because there is all kinds of stuff there that uh, um, that probably would be edible for the chickens. But chicken feed is so inexpensive, especially when you just got like 12 chickens anyways. I mean, they eat probably about three quarts of uh, chicken feed every day. And so I probably do, I bet you I'm less than 16 bucks a week for the chickens. And I'm, I'm getting right now six to nine eggs a day. So that's a lot of eggs. And I've got some friends that are buying like $4 a dozen and $6 for 18. So I'm, I'm getting some income to offset the, uh, the feed now, which is nice. Funny thing is, I might have mentioned this before, but uh, one of my tenants, their son has a reaction to eggs from the store because of the high corn content. It kind of makes the kid a little crazy. And so I said, well, try my eggs because my chickens are primarily, you know, like free ranging out here and they get uh, just a little bit of feed and she said, he has no problem at all with your eggs. So they've been taking quite a few of my eggs. And it's, uh, uh, it's kind of interesting that it works that way. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up because I started to go down that story talking about the shortages in the stores. Uh, I've been monitoring, you know, like Sam's Club locally here and also my local grocery store. And uh, it's kind of intermittent on the paper goods at the big box store. And a lot of the shelves are starting to get pretty thin, especially the produce. I was surprised the, the uh, fruit and vegetable section was uh, pretty doggone thin. In fact, they had no bell peppers or anything. Um, in the grocery store, the meat section is very thin, surprisingly thin. And, you know, you go down like the chip aisle and there's a whole bunch of brands that are just nowhere to be found now. They're just, it's kind of the same thing starting over from what happened last year. The face behind Snowbird, Utah, silver hiding in the mountains, generational situations there, research silver. Okay. 250 a dozen for free ranging eggs. Are they the brown eggs? I tell you, my eggs are pretty doggone big. That's another thing I like about the Rhode Island Reds. They they put out a pretty good, um, pretty good amount of uh, I mean, good size eggs for the type of chicken. Well, there's actually, um, it looks like the stores are starting to go back to the front facing type stocking that we saw last year, you know, where 
instead of having cans like eight or 10 deep, now they only have a few deep on the front. They bring everything forward to make it look like they're stocked, but they're really not. It's really time to kind of go back. I mean, I will remind you, again, I've, I've done a lot of this stuff for you several years ago. I said, look, the cheapest things to buy that are the most dense um, foods, it's like rice and beans, remember? Um, and I haven't looked at the price of rice here recently, but it, you used to be able to go up to uh, like Sam's Club or Costco and get a 50 pound bag for 16, 17 bucks. Maybe it's 19 bucks now, but still that's dirt cheap for 50 pounds. And you know, a cup of rice, when you add two cups of water, it makes two cups of rice. And if you've got like a bunch of uh, mason jar canned soups and stuff like I have, you can take a quart jar and probably feed four people when you make rice to go with it. The other thing is like kidney beans. Now, kidney beans cost a lot more for like a, I think it was like 30 pound bags or something, but it might be a dollar a pound, but still it lasts forever. And, it, and I even put a process in the, in the directories that shows you how you can use dried nitrogen and seal these in those Mylar bags. And you'll have stuff that lasts like 10 years. And then the last thing was like grits. Grits is extremely inexpensive. And there's these five pound containers you can order from uh, Sam's Club and Costco and then put them in the things as well. So anyways, you can, uh, you can really, you can really store a lot of food really quick and it's going to make you feel full. I mean, that's the worst part. You do not want to have a bunch of hungry people in your family. Rice will fill you up. Now, the other thing is get yourself a whole bunch of seasoning because I don't know about you. I do not like rice by itself. Rice by itself is, eh, it's almost like eating a biscuit to me. I know a lot of people like biscuits, but to me, it's like putting a wad of flour in your mouth. I never liked biscuits by themselves. But if you, uh, if you get a bunch of seasonings, um, I use two chicken bouillon cubes, you know, with a little bit over two cups of water. And then I have this, uh, um, butter powder that I put a little bit of that in, put my rice in, you know, after it's gotten to a boil and it's like 17 minutes, I got amazing tasting rice. Okay. I don't know. It's just an acronym. They're not trying to talk about Satanism. Just make America great again. That's all. So $17 for 25 pounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see. Sam's Club 50 pound rice cost. Okay, here are some recipes. Actually, it's uh, funny. It says uh, it's 17 to $20, but right now it says out of stock. Did you guys go out and buy it while I was sitting here talking and wiped out the stores? And it says you can pick up as soon as tomorrow at the local one I have here, $17.12 for a 50 pound bag. No, it's not plastic. Good stuff. I did hear about uh, the Chinese making some, some plastic rice. It could be artificial, I don't know. What you talking about warning signs? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know if parsley, they used it so you wouldn't get fungus or something. I hadn't heard that before, but it could be. Boy, it looks like I need to get out in the sun. I look kind of white here. Maybe it's just because I got this bright light on me. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't really grow any parsley. I do have some different kind of mints like spearmint and something else. Yeah, Linda, it's, just, it's been... Uh, been kind of an interesting time. I've been decompressing and thinking and stuff. And so there's a lot of things I've been doing. I've got, like I said, I got some videos that are about ready to come out. And I was uh, also kind of waiting for, you know, like we've kind of bounced back from the pretty good lows that we had. So I'm waiting for some opportunities for some of that as well. We're kind of at a crossroads of a number of different things. Uh, remember at the end of October, uh, they're actually going to start doing uh, evictions. So pretty soon you're going to start seeing, it'll probably take time, but 20% of the properties supposedly were underwater unless the government was able to bail out a lot of these folks. But uh, we might start seeing some short sales and foreclosures. So there could be people, you know, positioning some of their money to be able to, you know, pick up some of those things. And there's some big companies out there doing that. So we'll wait and see. Well, I did have an interesting thing. Uh, this was several weeks ago. One of my uh, rental properties, the downstairs bathroom was overflowing with the uh, raw sewage, which is kind of disgusting, right? So we go there, I had to, uh, now I have, we have a septic tank. So the first thing you looked is to see if there's something wrong with the septic tank. So I had to hire a guy like nine o'clock at night to come out, pay extra to come pump the septic tank. And they, the drain line or the fill line that actually goes to the tank that actually goes into the house. You know, he was running uh, something up into that. He goes, there's a blockage in the house itself. It's not actually the septic tank, but you know, you had to pay like 700 bucks or something to pump the tank at nine o'clock at night. So that sucks. So I had to call a plumber, at, you know, like 10 o'clock at night to come out and, you know, clear the clog, whatever was going on. And so they came out, cleared the clog and I've got pictures and stuff. So this will be one of the videos. So I'm giving you, you know, Reader's Digest version here. But in any event, um, Finished up about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, the next day they call me like about seven o'clock and says, it's backed up again. We're like, what the heck are you talking about? So I called the plumber guy and said, hey, look, something's not right. You guys must not have done it right. I need you to come back out. So they came out free, but they said, we need to come back the next day with a camera to figure out why this is blocked up because what I did should have been more than enough. I said, okay, sounds good. So this was now Saturday they had to come back and we brought this camera in and we realized, and by the way, the first day we realized they were using these uh, uh, wet wipes and uh, they showed me the brand and the brand says that they were flushable. But I did a little research online and the doggone, uh, a lot of plumbers are complaining saying, hey, we're having a whole bunch of problems with these things. These wet wipes are not disintegrating like toilet paper and they're clogging up the septic uh, or just, the lines, you know, to whether it's going to a septic tank or going to the city and it's costing people a lot of money. So anyways, when I came back with the camera, we found a whole section of pipe that was completely um, caked the pipe. And then what happens when other things come down, like maybe a little grease from washing dishes, it expands this stuff and it, it, they called it a fat burg is what it makes. So this thing is like a solid piece of like, Vienna sausage that clogs up your whole pipe. So they ended up having to take this water jet and they connected the camera to it and they went back and forth, back and forth in this like six foot section of pipe and uh, had to keep spraying it to get it completely clean of all of this wet wipe stuff. And it was Cottonelle wet wipes. So I'm trying to tell you right now, avoid these Cottonelle wet wipes because it cost uh, like $2,000, not counting the septic pumping 
So it was probably like 2,500, 2,600 bucks total. And it was, uh, it was a lot of money. So I think, uh, we've got that set. I've got a little more work that I got to do, um, on that, but, uh, I thought, isn't that amazing? Something so simple. And I told him, I said, look, you made this mess. You owe me the money for this. And, uh, you know, they can go back and maybe sue Cottonelle if they want, but I didn't create the problem, so I'm not paying for it. Yeah, 100, 150 pounds of rice is good. Hey, Craig, have you tried that? Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. What's the one that has like some flavor to it? There's another type of rice that I like to get occasionally too. It's got uh, like a flavor to it. I love that stuff too. Yeah, where is Edgewater Heating? He would like that story, but I'll put together. I got pictures and everything, and I've got the articles that I pulled up. Yeah, I'm about ready to plant my garlic and onions. Uh, I got my catalog in the mail, and I'm going to show you um, what I'm planning on buying this year. Remember, I've been buying this uh, mix of like sweet yellow, white, and purple onions. But to tell you the truth, I like the uh, the yellow onions the best because they're a lot like Valdelia onions. And I'm telling you, my onions this year were huge. If you remember, they were beautiful. So I kind of like those the best. So I'm probably just going to order those onions this time. What the heck is that other kind of rice? I can't think of it right now. Jasmine. Remember, you guys ever tried jasmine rice? I like jasmine rice too. That's really handy. Yeah, I like to, I actually like getting on here on the live stream because we can just kind of go through different topics. And uh, I had a whole bunch of things saved up in my mind. Normally I make a list so I can remember, but you know, I've been talking con continuously. There's so much that's happened. Of course, there's a lot less to say when I'm doing several videos during the week, but uh, it's been a while. <sighs> yeah, if they don't make... I know. The, the problem with elected officials is they'll screw something up, and then you beg them to fix it, so then they screw it up even worse. That's the problem with those things. Yeah, jasmine rice is good. I need to buy some because that's handy. Something for a little bit of a change. I picked up some pork steaks. It was like four pounds of pork steaks and there was only three of them. And I mean, they were big, like about this big and about a half inch thick. And I put them out on the grill and I've been eating on those. Those are, God, those are really, and I, you know, I like eating things that don't have, uh, what do they call it? It's not cured or anything. So it's like fresh pork. It's so much better for you. I don't know what sweet Thai is. Is that another type of rice? I don't think I've had that. I ate a Thai place a couple weeks ago and I found they have these clear noodles that are gluten free. I need to go to a Thai place and try to find those noodles. But those were amazingly good. You put it in the, uh, uh, let me think about what it's called. What's that soup that they make? Actually, it wasn't Thai. It was Vietnamese. I can't think of the name of the soup where they have like all kinds of different things in it, but that was uh, super good. Pho, pho soup. You guys ever have Vietnamese? I like the pho. Well, I'll tell you what, Craig is probably in uh, heaven having a Thai wife because I'm telling you, between Filipino and Thai, those are some of the best um, traditional women that you can find, especially if you go to the country and get them. I've, I've looked a lot of these things and they say, just don't bring them to the U.S., but I don't know. Seems like you got a better start right now. Yeah, 
Yeah, we got 23 people here. I'm surprised. You guys been uh, waiting for me, haven't you? Let me do a quick look and see what the precious metals are because I forgot to look at them. All right, so we're at 1783 for gold and 2389 for silver. For the last six months, silver's down 7% and gold is up 1.7%. But it looks like silver is making a run up now. So in the last 30 days, it's up 9%, where gold is up 2.66. So again, you know, silver is just gold on steroids. And the uh, gold-silver ratio is 74.76. Uh, it's still been running up since uh, March of this year. But it jumped all the way up to 80 and is back down to uh, like 75. So I keep hoping that we're going to get a breakout on gold anytime, but it hadn't happened yet. Ooh, homemade cheesecake. I was at a restaurant the other day and they had like a brownie that was gluten-free and then a scoop of ice cream on there. And I mean, the brownie was like fresh made out of the oven. I'm telling you, that was a delicatessenal treat. I like smoked fish too. You ever have mullet? I used to get mullet all the time in Florida. I have not. Uh, I've not done mullet in a long time. I think next trip I take to Florida, I'm going to try to bring me some mullet back, put it on dry ice or something, and then smoke it. That was one of my favorite things. Ted Peters, yeah, you know about the place. I've been there. It's a cash place. Well, at least it, forever it was cash. I don't know if it's still cash or not, but that surprises a lot of people when you sit down. They didn't take debit cards or anything, but it's been uh, probably five years since I've eaten there. Jake, are you from St. Petersburg area? That was my old stomping grounds. Tom Young Kung. I never heard of that, but, you know, I kind of just get whatever they got in the stores. If you remember uh, a little bit over a year ago at Tampa Bay, I lived in St. Petersburg for like 40 years. Uh, a little bit over a year ago, I bought a whole pile of uh, ah, crap. I can't think of what it's called. What are those? Oh, tamales. I bought a bunch of uh, frozen tamales from this company in Texas. And so the other day I pulled out my last bit of uh, chicken tamales. And uh, <clears throat> you thaw them out in the microwave, but I make, uh, you know, two cups of rice. And the last five minutes, I after they're, the tamales are thawed out, I put them on top of the rice and they kind of steam the last several minutes. And then I dump it out on a platter. But I'm telling you, oh, my God, that's so good. That's one of my favorite things is eating tamales. I need to get some of the green sauce, though. The uh, I forget what it's called. I love putting that on there, too. That's amazing. You own 900 acres of rice patties. That's a lot. I've got a professional smoker and I just hadn't even been using it. I thought about doing a chicken the other day and I didn't. I did buy some, uh, uh, what are those things called? The uh, bratwurst. Do you like bratwurst? Well, tamales, you can get it with pork, you can get it with beef, and you can get it with chicken. I just happened to have six tamales in a, a shrink bag thing that was frozen. Uh, that was chicken. That was my last one. I think I mainly have beef and pork now. So I bought 
a bunch of those things and filled like the whole top shelf of my freezer. So I've been working down on them, but they last forever. It's one of those deep freezers. Oh, silver liners on a diet. Okay, so uh, silver liner, let me tell you something. Uh, about every other week I get, depending on the size of the uh, bell peppers, uh, I've been stuffing bell peppers. And I'm going to tell you what, the other day the bell peppers were huge at Kroger. And I got eight of them. And that's all that fit in my little pan. And when I finished stuffing those with, uh, it was Italian sausage, some jalapenos from my garden, uh, you know, the onions that I grew, and then rice using that recipe I talked to you about earlier. Those bell peppers were one pound a piece. It was eight pounds, that total pan. I couldn't believe how heavy. Oh, and then cheese, right? I used mozzarella cheese and Parmesan cheese as well. But I'm telling you what. Those were amazing. And with the jalapenos just kicking up a notch, that was fantastic. So I like doing that. The, the stuffed bell peppers is one of my favorite. And you think about it, it's primarily a vegetable type dish. I just have a little bit of meat in there. And you got grains from the rice, but uh, and then some cheese, dairy. But it's a, it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice meal. It's very healthy. Kai is chicken. Okay. Tom Young is great. Oh, she's a scientist. Okay, that's pretty cool. I have a feeling the Supreme Court's going to rule that this is unconstitutional, what's going on with these uh, mandatory uh, vaccine stuff. And so everybody's going to get their jobs back. They're going to get back pay. They're going to get everything. Yeah, I'm in North Georgia. And boy, have I been happy living in this area. This place is God's country here for the type of weather we have and everything and the growing seasons, everything's just been amazing. I had amazing vegetables again this year. The only thing I will tell you is I used a different um, cow manure. Ace Hardware had this particular brand and I'll share it with you when I do my videos to explain, but that stuff was contaminated with uh, all kinds of seeds of all kinds of weird stuff that I had growing this year. And it, you know, viney stuff. I had all kinds of stuff. It was a pain in the butt. So I'm uh, I'm going to stick with black cow from now on to try to refresh my beds. But that was, that was disgusting this year. It caused me all kinds of trouble. I've been weeding, 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 trying to get everything out uh, by the end of the year here now. Tam Young Kung Pet Pet Spicy and Good. <laughs> I like all food. Honest to God, I like all food. It's, and it's just only in the last 20 years that the dang wheat stuff kills me. But I, I loved bread. I absolutely loved bread. But now I have to get gluten-free stuff. And a lot of that stuff just doesn't have the same texture, just like the noodles. The noodles are not the same. So everybody needs to just try to survive this because all of a sudden now there's, there's some stuff that's coming out. We'll just see. There, there's some stuff coming out that I think natural immunity is going to end up winning the day. And I'll tell you, if a whole bunch of these people that got this shot all start really having immune system problems, this is really going to be bad. Yeah, I've heard a lot about uh, police departments all over the country. In fact, Alaska just told everybody, anybody you guys that uh, are being told to get the vaccine, you don't want it, come up to our, our state. And I heard other states are doing the same thing. In fact, I saw something 
um, on one of the other platforms that talked about, hey, you know, all you nurses and doctors that are being told that you have to, let's go start your own hospital. I'd rather go to your hospital than these, you know, socialist hospitals they've got right now. So I don't know, maybe there's something that's going to happen just like, and I, we didn't even talk about Trump getting his own, um, I don't know, is it going to be like a YouTube type thing? He set up a platform and uh, that is uh, coming out. So, you know, maybe we're just going to be divided where you're going to have conservative and liberal separated now. I can't believe we've been talking for 55 minutes already. That's incredible. I do want to tell you, I did order uh, Babylon 5, the whole series. It was like five seasons. And then there's actually some bonus, like another whole season that there's done. And there's also been some movies that have been done. And this all came in one pack. And... That is a lot of freaking viewing because each one of the packs for each season was six DVDs and there's four episodes per DVD. So when you add all of it up, it is a lot of uh, viewing. So I've just about gotten through that now. And that's that's been actually really nice watching that. And then I went ahead and bought... Uh, I bought uh, Scrubs too, I need it. I wanted a comedy. So let me tell you, we used to go to a Thai restaurant in Largo, Florida. It was one of the gathering places we go when somebody was like leaving the company or retiring or something. And I used to get Thai hot. And I remember my son uh, was, uh, before he'd gone in the military, he went there with one of those uh, going away things with me. And, uh, you know, I said, here, try some of this. And he, he couldn't believe that I could eat that stuff. But I have to admit, it was rather painful. Uh, dang Thai hot, insane. So I probably shouldn't be eating Thai hot. You kind of got to work your way up to it. But I like spicy Mexican food, too. Have you been watching any of those videos about uh, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> There's some interesting uh, videos. Well, that'd be a nice bonus, 5,000 bucks, huh? I've got a, a tenant who's a, um, what do they call the guys that uh, drive the ambulances around here? A paramedic type guy. And uh, man, they work some God awful uh, hours. Yeah, let's go, Brandon. I couldn't think of the name of it. But he makes some pretty good money and his uh, he just got married and his wife does the same thing. That's just hard on your back though. Because especially today, we got a bunch of Java the Huts everywhere. So how about that? We're at uh, 59 minutes now. I think we're going to shut her down. That went amazingly fast. I'm glad I got on here and got to talk to you guys. I, was, I started a little bit earlier than normal. I was kind of in between things. I was about ready to load up the wood stove for the night. Um, but I said, well, let me get on here and do do this because I was kind of in the mood for it. So you still notice that I don't wear glasses anymore. Those, uh, that lens replacement surgery was fantastic. Um, kind of through, got through everything and it really, uh, it's really made a difference. The, the only problem is, you know, I used to wear glasses for far away. Now I have to wear it for small print. I was reading the, uh, you know, I bought a bunch of uh, Halloween candy and I was like, I want to dig into this, but yeah, I had to read the ingredients to make sure some of this stuff didn't have any wheat and I had to go find my glasses. That was a pain in the butt. So, and I used to have fantastic close up vision. Now I got garbage close up vision. But, anyways, it's only for the really, really small stuff. Yeah, paramedic. 
anyways, we're at an hour. I enjoyed the company. I hope, uh, I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.